Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about one of the most commonly asked coding question based on lit code. Uh, this question is called two sum. Uh, this is the very first question on lit code. Uh, it's called two sum and it's asked by so many different companies. So if you click on it, uh, you can see it's asked by Amazon, Google, Apple, Adobe, Walmart, eBay, pretty much uh, all the major companies. And actually I know that uh, a couple of my students have been asked and I've been asked a few times uh, only this question but some of its variation. So we're gonna look at this question, try to solve it and look at the complexity of uh, different algorithms and see how to best approach it. If you are preparing for an interview right now, I think you should start with this question and go from there because there is a high probability that you may get this question. And welcome to Taxi Tutorials. All right, so let's uh, understand the question first. And it's given an array of integers, return an indices of two numbers such that they add up to a specific target. You may assume that each number would have an exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice. I don't know why they make this so complex. Uh, but essentially what they're trying to say is uh, you have a number array in this case, it's a four number. This is one example of uh, input. And uh, the second input would be target, which is nine. And you need to find two numbers that adds up to nine in this array. In this case, it's two and seven, very obviously. And they, what they are saying, trying to say is there's only one solution. And so the output would be uh, the indexes of those two numbers. In this case, the index of two is zero and index of seven is one. So you return an array of these two indexes. The first thing you need to do when you get a question during an interview is to understand the question, uh, spend a few minutes, read at least three times. That's my rule. And then make a note. Uh, what is the input here? So inputs are uh, two inputs, numbers of array and then a target, right? So array and a number. What is an output? Output actually is an array. So keep that in mind. So what I usually do is I would create something like this. I would create a function called to sum, which has two inputs, numbers and a target. And it returns an array with two elements, uh, which would be index one and index two. You don't go on a wrong way. The second thing I would do is create some test cases so that it, you would understand better because the test case they have given right now, it's only one test case and it's very hard to uh, solve this problem uh, by having only what, one test case. So you can ask your interviewer, okay, what if the array is, and this would be like a corner case. Uh, so let's call it CC corner case. Um, what if the array is empty array? What would be the output, right? Maybe the output is an empty array. Okay, I don't know but that's what you want to ask uh, the interviewer. Uh, what if uh, you have uh, another case would be an array with two numbers or multiple numbers that doesn't add up uh, to the target, which means it doesn't add up to nine in this case. So what should we do in that case? In that case, the output should also be, I guess, an empty array. Okay, and the third data set would be this uh, 2727 uh, this has actually multiple solution because you can pair this two with this seven or this seven and this two with this seven and this seven. I know the question say was only one solution, but the reason I would go exhaust all the different variation is um, just in case. And this is a very common question and interviewer may trick you by give you giving you a little variation, right? So during an interview, I, if you get a very common question, I would exhaust all the uh, and that actually shows that, you know, your, your thinking process, right? So you would create all this uh, different kind of inputs and then discuss the output uh, with the interviewer. And he or she may say, oh, you know what? This would never be the case. In that case, that's fine. You already cross this out. Okay, so now let's look at the solution. Uh, there can be multiple solution. And the obvious brute force way would be you take the first number and I always do it manually here. So I would say take first number and then uh, add to by uh, going through each number here. So I can take two and then seven, add. Uh, and if it 
meets the target, which is nine, then you found your pair, right? But let's say if you can't, if you don't find it, let's say seven is some other number, then you would go the next one and next one and keep going until you reach the end of the array. Then you take the second number and then do the, th the same thing and then third number and then do the sa same thing, right? So the complexity of the brute force algorithm would be n squared, which is not acceptable. There's a better way of doing it. Uh, so the better way is using JavaScript objects. And the characteristic of JavaScript object is it has unique uh, keys. So the way it would work is uh, let's create an object, for example. And what would you do is uh, you take a number, uh, let's say it's two, and then you subtract from nine, which gives you seven. So you actually save seven here, right? So you're actually saving the complement of that number, not the number itself, okay? And uh, let's save the index. So index of this is zero. So I would save seven and zero. Then when you encounter the second number, first check if this number exists inside. If it exists inside, then you already found your complement because you already know the index of this number, which is zero, and then index of this, which is one, and then so the answer would be one. So this way, you have to just iterate uh, through only once from the array. And look up, finding this number inside is very easy. Uh, from For JavaScript object, is in constant time, right? So in that case, the, the complexity of this algorithm would be uh, O of n. So let's do this way. Okay, so as you said, we're gonna uh, use JavaScript object, but instead of JavaScript objects, I'm gonna use uh, maps, which is a little bit better. So let's create a map called complement. And maps were introduced in ES6. I actually have a video on maps, if you don't know. I'll provide a link here. Then I would get the array uh, length. So I would say nums dot length. Th. And then I would iterate through each element. So I would say for let i equal to zero, i less than len, i plus plus. Okay. Always uh, calculate length outside, not inside here. Because if you do it inside here, then it adds a complexity because every uh, iteration, you are calculating the same length over and over. So I would always have a variable and explain to the interviewer so he may be interested in the way you think. Okay, so now uh, remember we would say, we save the complement, right? And then check for the number. So first, to save the saving complement, I would do this, right? complement would be, uh, the number would be nums i. So I would say target minus nums i, right? So inside the complement, I'm saving the target minus the number, and I'm saving index as a value, okay? Let's say if I did this, what would, without even doing anything, what would the complement have? So if I do, Let's say console.log complement. Oh, I actually have not defined nums as well. So let's define it here. And now when I run it, as you can see, it gives me all the complements, which, which is um, the minus two, for 11, minus 6 for 15, then 2 for 7, and 7 for 2, right? So we know what it's saving, and it's actually saving the index. Okay, so now that we know how it works, here, before even saving, we will first check if inside the complement, if our number exists as a complement, greater than or equal to 0, which means it does exist, then return, what are we gonna return? We're gonna return the index 
of the the number itself and the complements uh, number right so we will return the complements index which is nums i and the second index would be index of the number itself right and that's all we need to do and at the end of it let's say if you don't find it then we can simply return here an empty array because after going through everything if we don't find it we're just going to return an empty array now if i run this well i'll have to console log this i would get zero and one so the algorithm is pretty simple and you as i said you need to explain your interviewer what the complexity is and the complexity is o of n because we are only visiting every single number once and look up inside the map is also uh, very fast now let's discuss the uh, how it's performing this exact algorithm how it's performing uh, with using maps and everything and here's my submission into lit code and as you can see speed wise uh, it's performing about 61.59 percent of all the admissions uh, which is pretty good and in terms of uh, a memory usage it's very efficient it's 94.84 percent of the javascript submission um, yeah so the best way to, to do this is look through this uh, solutions and see what they have done better to improve the, the time complexity and the space complexity but i have to warn you sometimes if you run the same algorithm twice it may give you a little bit because it's not perfect so you may get different uh, runtime distribution um, so just to let you know and i'll make more such videos like this um, and if you or your friends are interviewing right now i think you should you should share this this and other videos with uh, your friends so they can learn something as well I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. I have a couple of uh, Facebook groups. Feel free to follow them. Uh, they're interesting. You can ask me questions there and look at other people's uh, questions. And I actually created this group recently. I mean, I have a lot of content, but you can add some. <laughs> um, you can also follow me on Twitter. And I also have a medium where I'm going to put some more articles. You can also check out uh, my courses, I have one course on JavaScript and one course on uh, React hooks. Uh, feel free to check out. They are already in discount. Uh, I think it's $8.99 at the moment, dollar. So check it out. And thank you for watching.